How much should we read into Manziel working with the first team yesterday? Uh, as much as you should read into what Rashad Jennings did against Buffalo's second team defense in the Hall of Fame game. I was, I, I'm in Seattle, Chris, and I was up here in 2012 when they signed, the Seahawks signed Matt Flynn. Russell Wilson came in in the third round. They didn't make a call on who the quarterback was until the third preseason game was done. And it was clearly Wilson's job at that point. Mike Pettin, the Browns head coach, has said, we're going to wait until about the third preseason game to see who's our guy. Um, I will say this. Most defensive coordinators who become head coaches like their quarterbacks to be more conservative, less mistake-prone. They'll, they'll accept less flash for more efficiency. Um, that, that's been through, you know, true through time, and that's kind of Pettin's uh, modus operandi. I would expect that in the long term, he'll roll with Hoyer for a while, and uh, you know, if Manziel starts by about halfway through the season or before, I wouldn't be surprised, but I think unless Manziel just tears it up like Russell Wilson did a couple of years ago, this job is going to be Hoyer's to lose in time. Chris, what do you think the team's real level of confidence is in Brian Hoyer? I think they're confident in him based on what they saw last year, in stepping in and winning three games. But that said, they drafted Johnny Manziel for a reason. I think Hoyer, I mean, he's a career backup. Uh, he's coming off a knee injury. The ceiling's fairly limited here. Is he a guy that can win you a few games in that short term? Absolutely. We've seen him do that uh, recently. But long term, they're committed to Johnny Manziel. And for me, the depth chart release, pretty much everything that's happened with Mike Pettin this offseason in relation to Manziel has been very measured. You know, getting asked if uh, Manziel's off-field behavior before camp would affect his his status going forward or his learning curve and Petten saying, I don't know, I guess we'll find out. And I think everything's sort of been just to give Nanzel that little nudge forward. Uh, and my <laughs> belief is that the depth chart and keeping Manzel number two, the main reason behind it is that it's easier to let him go win the job. As Doug said, that, that Russell Wilson did than as anointing him the starter right out of the gate and then having him, flop in camp, struggle badly in the preseason, and then you have to circle back and try to take that job away from him and give it back to Hoyer. I think that creates a lot bigger mess than the situation they're in now where they have a guy in Hoyer that they can at least trust to hold down the fort. And if Manziel happens to have that Russell Wilson breakthrough early, heck, by all means, put him in there for week one. Hit me. Hey there, SI fans. I hope you enjoyed this clip from our daily live show, SI Now. You can find a link to the complete episode in the description box below. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe to Sports Illustrated's YouTube channel. Remember, you can watch SI Now Monday through Friday live at 1 p.m. Eastern time only on SI.com. All right, go along. You ready? Hope to see you there.